Good day. Today I'm going to show you how to deal with this type of questions where they say for which values of x will f at x times g at x be greater or equal to zero. This always comes up in the exam. If you don't find it in paper one, you will definitely find it in paper two, but it always comes out. So just before we deal with this level, let's start from level one. All right. So here is level one. So we have got a graph, the straight line graph, J, and the parabola f at x. And they said for which values of x will f at x be greater than j at x? So f at x is the y value of f, j at x is the y value of j. When you see this question, it's very simple. When you see a question that says one graph must be greater than the other or less than the other, what you have to do is to strictly focus on the point of intersections where they meet. So they meet here and there so what you have to do when you find out where they meet you have to draw vertical lines so let's draw vertical lines where they meet okay let's draw vertical lines where they meet so vertical lines so we draw vertical lines remember when you see this type of questions wherever they meet you draw vertical lines and what do you do when you draw vertical lines so if this vertical red lines separate the whole Cartesian plane into three groups, right? We have group one, group two, group three. So we have group one, group two, group three, right? Separated by these vertical lines. So let's look at group one. So f at x being greater than g at x means that f must be on top of g. So this is f, this is g. If you look at this group, f is indeed on top of g. f is higher than g, meaning the y value of f is higher than the y value of g. Right? Y value of f, of f is greater than the y value of g. So, does this fulfill? Yeah, it does fulfill. Greater than means this, the y value of this must be greater than the y value of this, right? So, the y value of this one is higher than the y value of the other one. Obvious. If group 1 fulfills, group 2 will not fulfill. But let's, let's check it. Let's prove it. So, you see in group 2, we have g being higher than f. You see, f is underneath g, if you look at it. Right? F is drawn underneath G. So it doesn't fulfill. So it means here F is less than G. Or you can say G is greater than F. Right? And then this side, on group 3, does it fulfill? It will obviously fulfill because if it doesn't work in group 2, it uh, works in group 3. The story always changes when we pass these vertical lines. So let's check it out. So in group 3, we have F being on top of G. So F is greater than G. Does it fulfill? Yes, because the question says they want F to be greater than G. Then when you find these three groups, you have to describe, uh, okay, when you find their groups that work rather, you have to describe them. So let's describe. Just before I continue, if you want to be tutored, either online or physically, online it doesn't matter where you are or which country you are at, you can still be tutored. So we offer cheap online lessons. And if you want to be tutored physically, we can still make an arrangement. So call or WhatsApp this number, but preferably, please WhatsApp uh, this number. And then we will take it from there. So what I do is that I tutor people uh, five days a week online. And I give tests once a week so that I can check your improvements. So we'll say X is an element of, where does group one start? You see, the x values of group 1, there is no beginning, right? There is literally no beginning. So it starts from negative infinity. And where does it end? So it starts from negative infinity until negative 1. You see the x value. Infinity will always have a curved bracket. So there you don't even think of it. Whenever you have infinity, whether negative or positive, it is a curved bracket. Now, what about here? Must we put curved or squared? It depends on this stuff. If the question was like this only, you will put curved. But if the question says greater or equals to as well, you put the square bracket. You just look at the question. That is all. Now, the other group also works. So when you are about to describe the other group, the new group, you say or. Oh. So let's describe the new group, which is this group. So it starts from what? It starts from 5 until infinity. You see the starting point always from left to right. Notice I didn't say from negative 2 until infinity. I said from negative infinity until 2, always from left to right. So whenever you're describing groups, always from left to right. So describing group 3, you'll notice it starts from 5 until infinity, right? So it starts from 5, right? And it has no end until infinity. And don't be confused by the y values. Remember describing only the x values. 
so it starts from five until infinity there's no end right so the five also has a square because of this stuff and then infinity obvious curved all right so here are two ex other examples so the state for which values of x will have at x be less than g at x right so obvious we have to look at the point of intersections and then that's where we have to draw our vertical lines so we'll draw a vertical line over there okay uh, And then we draw another one over there where the graph meet. So the state for which values of x will f at x be less than j at x. So it means f must be under j. So here in group 1, remember it's 1, 2, 3, f is on top of j. Group 2, f is now under j because j is on top of f. So group 2 fulfills the requirement. What about group 3? Remember to check all groups because you might, you might be surprised. But obvious, if group 1 works... Uh, if group 1 doesn't work, group 2 will work. If group 2 works, group 3 will not work. Story changes after the vertical lines. So let's just check group 3. So we see that F is on top of G. So it doesn't meet this requirement. So only group 2 meets it. So let's describe group 2. Remember group 2 starts from this red line until the other red, uh, red line. So the first red line is uh, negative 1 so it means x is an element of negative 1 until what until 5 so here it's not less or equals to if it was less or equals to we put square but it's less only so we put curve same thing goes for here then let's describe this one so where g is now less than f so group 1 let me remove this tick does it fulfill in group 1 f is higher than g, g is under f, so it's less than f, so it does work here. Group 2, g is on top of f, so it doesn't work. You see this graph is on top of the other graph. And then this side, we have now g being under f, so g is less than f, so it works. So group 1, group 1, where does it start? x is an element of, so there's no beginning, it starts from negative infinity, until which x value until negative one and then the, uh, it's curved and you see because of this stuff it's obviously curved right and then let's describe uh the other group so we're about to describe a new group that's why i say oh so this group group three the x value starts from five until infinity so it starts from five until infinity infinity always curved here curved the square because of that it's curved so this thing applies everywhere and that's what we have let's go to level two all right welcome to level two so i call the previous one level one and this level two so you have to cram something in this case we don't do this we don't use the same thing as we did in the previous in the previous we focus on the point of intersection right i wanted to cram that whenever it has to do with uh one graph you know being greater than the other graph or or maybe one graph being uh less than one graph being less than the other graph or one graph being greater than the other graph we have to focus on the point of intersections where they meet and draw the lines right but in this case it's different right i want you to look at level one and level two level one you focused on the point of intersection but here when you see multiplication stuff you don't focus on the point of intersection please claim that you focus on the x-intercept of each graph. So, for instance, if I start searching, I see an x-intercept here. So, I draw a vertical line. And then I continue searching. I see another x-intercept here where the graph touches x. It should be of any graph, right? As long as you see an x-intercept, draw a line there. You see, I see another x-intercept where it meets with x. Then I draw a line. So how many groups is this separated into this group one, which has no starting point? This group two, right, which is restricted, group three, which is restricted, group four, which has no end point, right? So now when you see this type of questions where they say f at x times j at x must be less than zero. Less than zero, you see, uh, in most textbooks, when they say a is positive, they don't like writing it in words. They say a is greater than zero. If they say a is negative, they write it like this. 
So when you look at this, this is less than zero, meaning it's negative. So basically what you have to do with the signs for it to be a negative, it has to be positive times negative, right? This one must be positive, this one must be negative, or it must be negative times positive. So this, the signs of these two have to be different for it to be negative, right? So it's, it's either it must be positive and negative or negative and positive. You know that when you multiply different signs, the answer is negative, right? Then let's go to the, uh, the diagram. So basically in the diagram, you're looking at the position of the y values. If it is above, right? If it is above the x-axis, like this one, it is on top of the x-axis, the horizontal line. So it's positive. While this one is below the x-axis. So we know the y values is negative. We don't necessarily need to know their y values. We can already tell that are here obvious. Y is positive. This side, y is negative because one is above the horizontal line, the other one is below. So it means this one is positive, this one is negative. Does it fulfill this requirement? Yes, it does, because it has to be different. So group one works. Obviously, if group one works, group two won't, but let's check. In group two, this one is below the horizontal line, so it's negative. This one is below the horizontal line, so it's also negative. Negative times negative is positive. It won't work, right? So let's check group three. In group three, this one is above the line, so it's positive. The other one is below the line, so it's negative. So group three works. Group four obviously won't work, but let's just verify. So we have this being positive, right? It is on top of the y-axis, so it's positive. The other one is also on top of the y, uh, the x-axis, not y-axis, right? Both of them are on top of the x-axis, so they're both positive. So positive times positive is positive right remember these are the y values we're looking at so it doesn't fulfill so let's describe these two groups so group one when we look at group one remember there's no starting point so it means x is an element of minus infinity we already know it's curved up until what up until negative four okay curve to square this one we look at this stuff so because this equal to is actually a square now we're about to describe another group, so we say or. Oh. So this is called interval notation. I just taught you interval notation. In interval notation, we don't write or oh in words, right? We write or oh like this. Most people prefer interval notation. Inequality notation is this stuff. So I could describe this in inequality notation, but most people prefer interval notation. So this group starts from 1 until 5. So it starts from 1 until 5. So obvious, a square bracket. So that is our answer. With the next example, you can even post the video and attempt and uh, check if you understand it. Okay, so I'm going to give you the next example now. All right, here is the next example. So if you want, you can post the video. All right, let me give you the solution. So obvious, when we see this stuff, it must be negative, right? So it means that um, it must be positive, positive, right? So it must be a plus, ah, not positive, positive. It must be a negative. So it's positive, negative, or negative, positive. The signs must be different. And then we draw vertical lines. So when we draw vertical lines, we draw them at the x-intercepts that we see. We draw them at the x-intercepts we see. So group one, group two, right? group three, group four. So group one, does it fulfill? This one is positive, this one is negative. Group two, does it fulfill? This one is negative, negative, it doesn't. Group three, because you can see this one is negative, it's under the x-axis. This one is also negative under the x-axis, right above below. Group four, this one is on top of the x-axis. The other one is under the x-axis. So it means this one is positive, this one is negative. Yeah, they're both different, so it works. Group 4, this one is positive, this one is positive, so it doesn't work. Let's describe. So group 1, x is an element of negative infinity until what? Until negative 4, right? From negative infinity to negative 4. So curved bracket, and because of this, also curved. Then we say, or oh, let me just continue here. So we describe this one. So it starts from 1, it ends at 5. Both curved bracket because of this stuff. Then let's go to uh, the second one. The second one, we have, uh, let me just remove this stuff. 
obviously the lines won't change because both questions are in the same level it's multiplication so the lines are obviously at the intercepts so the both must multiply and give you a positive so it means it must be positive and positive or negative and negative meaning they must both be the same so in group one this one is positive this one is negative it doesn't fulfill group two this one is negative underneath the line this one is also negative negative times negative is positive so group two works this time group three this one is positive this one is negative it doesn't work because positive times negative we know is negative group four this one is positive the other one is also positive because it is on top of the x-axis right these two are on top of this line this horizontal line so that both positive positive times positive is positive so it does work as well so let's describe them so group one starts from so x is an element of it starts from negative four until one and because of the question it's curved curved then we say or then we describe this one this one starts from five and has got no end so it starts from five until infinity curved because of infinity obvious uh this side we know curved and that is it that brings me to the end of my lesson so uh, like the video and subscribe to my channel so that you can receive more of this stuff and if you've got a question just comment on the section below and then i will respond you want me to make a video comment on the section below and i'll respond